Hello, this is Mahesh, and today I am going to read you a Chanda Mama story. This story was published in August 2006 issue of Chanda Mama. A question of profession. The cremation ground presented an eerie spectacle on that dark night. The moon was hidden behind the clouds, and it was drizzling intermittently. The pitch darkness was relieved only by occasional flashes of lightning that lit up the somber scene. causing an airy dance of jerky shadows in the cremation ground occasionally a jackal spine chilling howl or the blood curdling laughter of some invisible evil spirit cut into the silence that hung like a shroud over the area king vikram once again made his way to the granar tree from which the ancient corpse was hanging obvious to everything but the mission on hand he brought the hanging corpse down by cutting the rope with his sword Slinging it at stride his shoulder he had just begun his return journey when the vampire possessed the corpse and said o king you are the monarch of a vast kingdom as such you should be attending to your administrative duties instead of wandering about in a cremation ground in the pursuit of some obscure goal how could you forget your true calling you remind me of devi prasad a youth who took a certain profession with a distinct goal in mind however he became so obsessed with his profession that he lost sight of his goal the vampire then narrated the following tale lakshmi das was a prosperous diamond merchant of bhopur he had three sons while the elder two helped him in his business the youngest devi prasad was not at all interested in business his great passion in life was literature and he would spend all his time reading and composing poetry a well known poet lived in that town he held poetry appreciation sessions at his house almost every evening devi prasad was a regular participant he would read his poetry and critically assess the work of others his creativity erudition and eloquence attracted the administration admiration of his listeners among them was vimala she to love poetry she and devi prasad often had animated discussions which eventually paved the way for a close friendship vimala informed devi prasad that her father dhaniram was a wealthy trader of jagannpur however he had taken ill as advised by his physician he had come away to the more salubrious environs of bhopur vimala had accompanied his, her father to take care of him one day vimala said My father is now fully cured so we are returning to Jagannpur tomorrow Devi Prasad was stunned for a moment Vimala I have realized that I cannot live without you will you marry me Vimala blushed first you get the consent of your parents then you may ask them to approach my father to discuss the alliance at first Devi Prasad considered taking up the matter with his parents right away then he thought it would be improper when his elder brothers still unmarried meanwhile lakshmi das had to travel to jagannpur on business there he ran into his childhood friend jagatlal who was a very rich merchant he invited him home there he met his friend's three daughters who impressed him deeply with their courteous manners cultured outlook and dignified bearing He complimented Jagatlal on having brought them up so well. Jagatlal laughed and said, "Although I haven't met your sons, I can imagine that they would naturally take after you in good nature. Since you admire my daughters so much, would you like to make them your daughter-in-laws?" "I would like to," answered Lakshmi Das earnestly. "But the youngsters must first meet. Don't you think so?" that would only be proper but i am afraid our towns are so far apart that arranging a meeting and then conducting the weddings would be time consuming task my daughters will abide by my decision i have no doubt your sons will do likewise for you so you go ahead and discuss the matter with them if everyone agrees we can go ahead with the preparations lakshmi das rushed back to bhopur there he sought out his sons and told them all that had happened his two elder sons had no objections to the marriage however devi prasad unexpectedly threw a spanner into the works by declaring that he wished to work another man he wished to marry another girl 
Lakshmidas asked him who the girl was. Devi Prasad told him her name. What? The daughter of Dhaniram of Jaganpur, he shouted. Don't you know his and our family are traditional enemies? There can be no question of any matrimonial alliance with that family. Quietly but firmly, Devi Prasad answered, I am sorry, father, but I cannot do that. I didn't know about the family enmity, but that makes no difference to me. I love Vimla and can't dream of marrying anyone but her. In that case, Lakshmi Das thundered, There is no place for you in this house. Without a word, Devi Prasad walked out of the house with just clothes he had on. He went to Jaganpur and told Vimala all that had happened. Vimala was visibly disturbed. I had no idea of our family's enmity. If this is true, then my father too will never agree to our marriage. Devi Prasad spiritedly said, I have left my home and family for your sake. You too shouldn't have any misgivings. Defy your parents and walk out of your house. But the pragmatic Vimala retorted, But what will we leave on? You have no money of your own, nor can you count on your family's support. The same will be my case if I leave my home. So first of all, find yourself a job. Then we can think of getting married. Devi Prasad realized that what she said was true. He now started looking for a job, but his search proved futile and he was not trained for any vocation. Meanwhile, he was literally starving. At this juncture, a rich man from the nearby, Vajrapur took pity on him and said, Devi Prasad, we have no washerman in our village, so if you take up this job, you can make some money. The villagers would pay you well and give you some food as well. Devi Prasad's heart sank at the prospect of taking up this menial job, but having no other option, he agreed. At Vajrapur, he soon established himself as the village washerman. All the people patronized him and his income started increasing. One day a sadhu arrived in the village as the rich man's guest. His ochre robes were given to Devi Prasad to wash. Later the sadhu called Devi Prasad and gently admonished him. Look at the clothes you have washed. My boy, how can you come up in your profession if you work in this half-hearted manner? Finding a sympathetic listener, Devi Prasad burst into tears and poured out all his moves to the sadhu. I am not a professional washerman, but I am doing this job only because there is no other alternative. He concluded. In a compassionate tone, the sadhu said, When you are doing a job, you must do it with love and care. Only then can you progress in that profession. But I can't bring myself to love this job, protested Devi Prasad. If a job can bring you wealth and position, that is its greatness. The dignity of a job is the dignity of those who perform it. So take pride in, in your profession. Learn new techniques and methods and practice them. Try to improve your job, advise the sadhu. Devi Prasad took the sadhu's advice to heart. Abandoning his earlier disdain for his job, he began thinking of how he could do it in a better and more efficient way. He went to the dhubi ghats in the neighboring villages to watch the other washermen at work and observe the techniques they used. As he could satisfy his customers, more work began coming his way. Gradually, it struck him that old clothes from which the colors had faded would regain their luster if they are re-dyed. Thus, he started a dyeing center, which was a great success. He now had to take on hands to help him. Soon he was running a full-fledged laundry and dyeing unit, which not only provided service to the villagers, but it was a source of income for several youth. He soon became a notable figure of the village. Meanwhile, Jagat Lal had heard from his friend Lakshmi Das all that had happened. One day he called on Lakshmi Das and said, It is a matter of great sorrow for me that I have become the cause of rift between you and your son. I am determined to solve the problem. Vimala's father Dhaniram is my friend. Whatever family differences exist between him and you can be sorted out. They shouldn't come in the way of your children's happiness. Dhaniram is ready to forget the old feud. Let us meet Devi Prasad and bring him back so that wedding with Vimla can take place. 
Lakshmidas met Dhaniram and sorted out their differences. Accompanied by their family members and Jagatlal, they set out for Vajrapur to meet Devi Prasad. Devi Prasad received them warmly and in answer to their queries told them all about how he had struggled to reach his present position. After hearing him out, his mother sighed and said, No doubt you have acquired wealth and status after so much hard work. But we aren't happy with your chosen profession. Remember, you are the son of a diamond merchant. Emboldened by this, Vimla, who was standing nearby, piped up. I too am not in favor of this profession which calls for menial work. I am not ready to marry you if you continue in this life. You can choose between me and your work. Devi Prasad looked at her squarely in the eye and answered, Listen then to my decision. I shall marry only a girl who respects both myself and my profession. For a moment there was a stunned silence. Then Jagatlal placed his hand on Devi Prasad's shoulder and said, My son, there is one such girl who is ready to work shoulder to shoulder with you. My third daughter, are you ready to marry her? Devi Prasad bent and touched Jagatlal's feet and said, Uncle, I shall be honored to marry your daughter. Concluding the story at this point, the vampire demanded, O oh King, Devi Prasad had left his family and a flourishing diamond business for Vimala's sake. His present job as a washerman and dyer was no cakewalk, but involved much labor. When he knew that Vimala did not like it, he could have left it and returned to a life of ease as a diamond merchant. So why did he choose to cling on it? Abandoning the very person for whom he had chosen it in the first place, doesn't this reflect his utter stupidity? If you know the answer, speak out, for if you choose to keep quiet, your head shall shatter into fragments. Without battling an eyelid, King Vikram answered, Far from being stupid, Devi Prasad reveals himself as a wise and mature young man. A profession by itself is not good or bad. It is the man performing it who lends it dignity or infamy by sincerity or lack of it. This was the lesson Devi Prasad had observed of by the sadhu. Despite being condemned as a menial job, the profession of laundering had brought him wealth and honor, and he felt that he had to honor it in return. Hence the decision to continue with it even at the cost of losing the girl he loved. On hearing this, the vampire nodded in approval before going off into peals of thunderous laughter. The next moment, he along with the corpse moved off the king's shoulder with a jerk and flew back to the tree. King Vikram gave a little sigh as he gazed upon the scene. Then he squared his shoulders and retraced his steps towards the tree.